Welcome to the Creative Contessa's Book Corner. Today we're going to be discussing five more books that I think are essential if you wish to delve into the world of 15th century dance. Now, if you're enjoying this content and you would like to see more of it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you would like to support it more actively, then do please become a Patreon on my Patreon page. Link in the comments below. Let's go to the corner. So we have several very interesting pieces today, and some of them are more direct dance sources in the sense of they present the actual dances and the dance descriptions, and some of them are going to focus on the context. So our first dance manual compendium that I definitely feel everyone should own if they care deeply about 15th century dance is the Bas Dance Handbook by Dr. David Wilson. This is an excellent source because it compiles all of the sources on the Franco-Burgundian bus dance tradition, including English sources, from the mid-15th through the early 16th centuries, all together in one spot. And it provides both the original French, in, or original English in some cases, in transcription, and then in parallel, an English translation. So for those of us who speak, read, and write French, we can make our own call whether we agree with the translation. I don't necessarily always agree with other people's translations, but being a professional translator, so that might be a professional hazard for me. What's also nice about this is that as uh, other such compendia, it contains opening introductory chapters that have really fascinating details about <clears throat> the context of these dances and little primary source anecdotes Amusing things, for instance, in this one, there's a case, a lawsuit, <laughs> that was brought uh, by one dancer who was pranked by his fellow students and was embarrassed upon the dance floor, so he sued them <laughs> for his embarrassment. So, Bastogne's Handbook, David Wilson, definitely a must-have. For England in this period, there are vanishingly few sources. In fact, there's only one that describes dance in any real detail, specifically the 15th century. And that is a manuscript that is referred to as either the Gresley Manuscript, or the John Baines Dance Collection, or the Gresley Drachalo Dance Collection. It's got several names. Basically, it is a several pages in a manuscript from the Dracula family papers and it actually describes a, a plethora of dances, provides a whole list of dances for which neither music nor descriptions are uh, provided and offers us at least somewhat of a window into dance in England in the 15th century. And there's one easy place where you can read up on that and it is the it's published in the Royal Musical Association's Research Chronicle, um, issue 29 in 1996. And the article was written by David Fallows. And I, you can tell this is a facsimile of a facsimile of a facsimile. But this is a must have if you care about really expanding your whole view of 15th century dance all across Europe. This is Dr. David Fallows' transcription and translation of the original and it was done in somewhat haste because he apparently received it originally in the early 80s and sat on it for a whole lot of years without doing anything with it and then when he realized that he had just he had in his hands the first and only source on 15th century english dance he hastened to publish it and unfortunately his transcription therefore of both the dances and the music is sometimes faulty and that has had consequences to this day in versions of music for specifically the dance libens distonis. Anyway, I do recommend that you absolutely go and find yourself a copy of David Fallow's um, article, which is actually specifically called The Gresley Dance Collection, circa 1500. So everyone who's 
interested in 15th Century Dance, I recommend finding a copy of this. You can get it through JSTOR. If you have to pay for it, that's okay. It's really okay to pay for things occasionally. Not everything should be free. Especially when you're supporting the research of obscure researchers who aren't going to make a fortune off of all the time and effort they put in. Okay, so the Gresley Dance Collection. Next, um, we have a book that comes with a caveat. So, um, the book on the art of dancing, that's a translation of Antonio Cornazzano's manual of this name. And this is a translation by uh, Madeline Ingelhern and Peggy Forsyth. It was done and published in 1981. I do recommend this book, but with several user instructions. One, do not take their translation necessarily as being perfect. Unfortunately, they only present the English and not the English against the original Italian or even their transcription of the original Italian. And I'm always leery of that because again, translators make mistakes. I am one. I've made them. So I prefer to always have the original language to be my own judge. So their translation, especially compared to more recent translations of this work, is not necessarily the best. But it does, it is all of Cornazzano's dance manual in one easy to carry source instead of in a big bulky compendium. Also, of course, they provide some comments and some introductory uh, chapters that are of interest. It's always good to get an idea of other people's ideas on these matters because it might help inform your view more fully. So I do recommend buying a copy of this, but remember, don't take it as gospel. Take it as being just as fallible as any other piece of dance scripture. Moving on. The next book in our collection is not dance per se, but I feel the greatest failing of most people engaged in historical dance is their failure to understand or even wear ever the clothing of the people who designed and delighted in these dances. So my recommendation is that everyone who is serious about understanding and feeling dance from this era should also understand the clothing. And for that, I have a good general 15th century oversight for you. Renaissance dress in Italy, 1400 to 1500. This is by Jacqueline Harold, and this is indeed the Bible of 15th century Italian clothing. Um, ignore all these papers represent things I need to go back to. It's a very systematic and professional method of research. Uh, so this. This, you, you can, the text provides fascinating insights into the details of the clothing, the kinds of fabrics, the cost of the fabrics, the weight of the fabrics, the amount of ornamentation. But Jacqueline Harold also provides quite a large number of very high quality pictures of people in clothing. And so you can start to understand about how people were burdened by their own sartorial tastes and how that might inform these dances that we're doing. Right? You can even see here, this dynamic pictures like this one give you an idea of the sorts of motions that, of which people are capable. And that should also then be used to inform the dance. So I really do recommend a general overview of the clothing of this era. The final on today's recommendations. Also not directly related to dance per se, although there are definitely descriptions of dance in context. But that is specifically understanding dance in its context, in the greater world in which it existed. I really do feel this is another major failing of historic dancers. Is they have no clue about why dance was being done, where, when, how it was being done, 
they don't understand the trappings of dance, they don't understand the ancillary accessories of dance, the feasting, the food, the structures, the decorations. And so for that, I can recommend actually one book, and this is technically for Burgundy, but the court of Burgundy was extremely dominant and influential during this era. So even if you're focusing on Italian dancing, this book is excellent. But I like to focus on all dance in the 15th century. And so this book, Court and Civic Society in the Burgundian Low Countries, provides a compendium of primary source accounts, first-hand accounts by people who were present at these events. And it describes tournaments and feasting and dancing and masks and performance dancing and costume dancing and how all of those things really were bound together. So you will get a much more holistic picture of dance through a work like this. And it's, it's also fascinating. Lots of court gossip, lots of court melodrama, people poisoning other people, marriages gone awry, all sorts of backstabbing. It's really, it's, it's like a soap opera in a book, but also good for learning. This has been your edition of the Creative Princesses Book Corner. If you enjoyed today's little video, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you wish to support my efforts more directly, please do become a patron on Patreon. Happy reading.